Hey everyone, today I want to talk about security a bit. I know security is a broad topic and there are tons of things that I could tell you about how to secure your GraphQL server, but I want to focus today on one specific aspect and that is the introspection. I will do a couple of follow-up videos that will go in other things like rate limiting, uh, query complexity or query depth analysis and all these things to make your GraphQL server much more secure. I said it many times before, the cheapest way to get your GraphQL server secure is really persistent queries. And I have done about persistent queries already a video which walks you through on how to set that up and secure with it your GraphQL server. By the way, we are running workshops at several conferences throughout this year. In January, we will be hosted by NDC London. In April, you can catch us at .NET Days Romania. And in May, we will be at NDC Oslo. So if you want to spend two days together with me and Martin diving really deep into GraphQL and building a production-ready GraphQL server, then join us there. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive into it. So I have a little server set up here and I think it's already running. Yeah, it is on port 5000. And at the moment, it's our basic demo server. So you can just go on it and it will work. I can write any query that I want here. So I can run that and then I get just the result. So basically what I expect from a GraphQL server. Okay, so what do we want to secure here? First, we don't want to expose everything our server can do. So we, so we want to hide essentially the schema and its capabilities from somebody that is snooping around. But this is actually not really securing your server. What we also want to do is that when our server is at production, we don't want to have people writing lots of introspection queries against that. An introspection request for a large server could produce a very large response. So this is already something that we might want to avoid. There are actually better ways to give people your schema when it's really large, and that is with an SDL file. So at production, you could give your consumers actually the SDL file, and then they could use that in their tooling, like I did here. But also this endpoint, we might want to secure against anybody going against this. But also this endpoint, we might want to secure. Okay, let's have a look at how we can do that. So first, let's secure introspection. And to do that, we're going to go into the program CS and into our GraphQL configuration code, which is here. And to secure introspection, we're going to add a new validation rule, which is called add allowed introspection or add introspection allowed rule. While the rule is called add introspection allowed here, it actually denies all introspection. So the validation rule essentially determines if you are allowed to execute the introspection. Okay, let's see how our server does now. We're going back here. And if I would refresh the schema here, you can see schemas unavailable. But if we try to write our own little introspection query here, let me paste it in. For instance, we are getting the schema and then try to iterate over all the types that we have, essentially get the, the names of all the types. Then we would get here an error message. Introspection is not allowed for the current request. And that is a good hint because it's not allowed for this current request. But what is with our developers? Maybe we want to allow just for our developers the introspection request. And that is where the HTTP request interceptor comes in. So in order to control more fine-grained who is allowed to do introspection requests, we can override our HTTP request interceptor. More concretely, we want to override the onCreateAsync method here. And this method essentially allows us to add more content more state to our GraphQL request builder. So let me reformat that. And now let's define the rules when we are allowed to introspection. So ideally, we have authentication set up and we could look at the claims or whatever from our token. But in this case, I didn't bother to set any authentication here up because we want to keep it simple. So we're going to check if the HTTP context has a header specified for our request. So we can go here to the request and then look up the headers. And if we find an introspection header, then we allow introspection. Okay, not secure. As I said, ideally you would combine that with authentication or authorization here and then do it more fine-grained. So the next thing is that we can now build up state 
So we can take our request builder here and we already have here some predefined helpers that let us build up the context in a way that we are allowed to do introspection or we are allowed to execute non-persisted queries. Whatever rule you have, you essentially can shut the rule off for this request. So we're going to say allow introspection here and then we're basically done. So we just need to register our request interceptor. Then we're going to restart our server, which .NET Watch basically does let's go back to our graphql id then refresh and you can see i still cannot do these requests here because i'm not allowed but as soon as i add our header and since we didn't check the value it could be any value but now we can execute that and get back the introspection request and i can also refresh it here and it works so that's an easy way to disable the introspection but also allow it for your developers for instance okay next thing so how can we define that this SDL file is available or not available or define authorization for it. So this can be done actually by splitting here the map GraphQL. By default, map GraphQL has everything to it. Like all the things that come with hot chocolate are configured, all the transport things here, but we also could split it out. So first thing we can do the map GraphQL HTTP. And this guy here is all about the GraphQL over HTTP spec, the GraphQL HTTP get and the GraphQL GraphQL, HTTP post, and these things are implemented here for the transport. The second thing here is that we can map the schema file, and that is our SDL. For all these things, we should define a path so we know where it is. And for this guy here, GraphQL should be the thing you choose because that is recommended by the GraphQL over HTTP spec. This guy here is something that Hot Chocolate does to make it easier with client tooling and also take pressure off the interest that is an optional value added that we did. So you can map it wherever you want. In our case, we're going to map it on GraphQL slash schema. So how can I define here any authorization rules? Very easy. We can just say require authorization here, and then you can specify any policy and you essentially can use the basic ASP.NET Core authorization policies here, then just specify the policy that you want to have for this specific schema file here. One more thing here, and that's about any of these map GraphQL thingies here. We always have an options here, so I can say with options, and then I have the options for this specific GraphQL HTTP here, so it's the GraphQL HTTP options, and there you can further limit what this thing can do. If you, for instance, do not want GET requests, HTTP GET requests for GraphQL, then you can switch them off here. Or if you don't want to allow multi-part requests, you can switch them off here. So you have like a couple of switches here to fine tune what transport aspects you really want to allow. But with the configuration that we have here, we also have no banana cake pop anymore. So you have to map that as well. And that works like map banana cake pop. And then we can put it on the UI path. So GraphQL slash UI or IDE or whatever you want. And with this thing, we now have completely configured our GraphQL stuff. We can now go back to our brother and refresh that. And then, oh, we don't have any banana cake pop anymore. What a surprise because we put it here. And if we now just created a document here, a new one, and you can see that the pass is correct. But it's only correct because we are using the standard route. If we put our GraphQL endpoint here on a different route, for instance, foo, this would no longer work. But you can then specify here the relative pass to get to the GraphQL endpoint. In our case, that would be one down, two down, and then foo. And then it, this would again work. So let's refresh that. This no longer works because there's no GraphQL endpoint anymore. But we now get correctly here foo. Okay. And then we again should be able to get our endpoint, to get our introspection request. But we didn't uh, configure the header here. So we need to do again the introspection header, any value, refresh, and everything works. One positive side effect here is if you define for each of these things separate routes, it's actually faster under huge pressure. If you don't have like huge pressure, don't worry about just use map GraphQL and uh, you will be fine. But if you have a lot of data requests, then it can make a difference to put each thing on its own route. I hope this got you more insights in how to set up the introspection security rules and makes your public GraphQL server just this much more secure.
If you want to help our project, please head over to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. It really helps our project grow and include even more people into our amazing community. And with this, we are done. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.